I'm going to give you a little bit of history first, right? And then we'll get into the, the prehistory, all right? So our visitor center was the ranch house for Charles Willard, the guy that homesteaded here in 1923 at the ripe old age of 65, okay? He lived in Cottonwood. His wife died. That's when he came out here. He was like a third, fourth generation agriculturalist, um, produce farmer. So he... His idea was to plant a bunch of trees here, uh, mostly to support the, the mining industry. It was in Cottonwood, Clarkdale, and Jerome. Some of his proof they say reached up to Flagstaff. But anyway, he had about 1,800 trees out there. Ooh, he was flat. Your sticks are actually, you see a, a stack wall, okay? And behind it is a little cave. If you look at the ceiling of that cave, you should see some black. Okay, that's soot from fires. Those are ancient fires. Okay, there's three rooms in there that are ancient Sanagua uh, rooms. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay, okay, up there. Okay. Charles Willard built that wall as a retaining wall for a road that he cut up into that alcove. That's mm -hmm. where this tiller came from. They dragged it down from, uh, yeah. from up there. But yeah, he used that as a little uh, storage space. Um, but yeah, there are three rooms up there at our Sanawa, and that's who we're talking about for this whole site here, uh, or the Sanawa uh, culture. Um, we're going up to an 18-room dwelling, mm -hmm. but there's three there. Mm -hmm. This hill right over here with all the pinion, it's, it's low hill, it's kind of close to us with all the pinion and juniper trees on it. There's a couple more rooms up there. Uh, along with thousands of pieces of what the archaeologists call lithic scatter, which are all these little stone chips that are generated when the, the ancients were making their tools, their stone tools. Okay. You go down over that hill, there's a big sinkhole. Um, it's about, let's see, about 150 feet across and about 60 or 70 feet deep now. Uh, there's three rooms down in that sinkhole. Uh, there's about 30 elements of inscription ancient inscription on the walls of the sinkhole oh, wow. yeah so it's uh that's a pretty neat mm. little place albeit dangerous to get to that's why we can't let the public in there to see that but uh, but it's kind of cool uh, he did mention about rattlesnakes and yes. the last person in the uh in the tour group, usually is the one that gets bitten. No, I don't think that's how. Be quiet. They came out of a tree and the bird was Yeah. Yeah. Blunt folds are associated with pour overs, which is a kind of a local term for waterfalls. So if you look up there, Okay, that's the waterfall. It's dry right now. Of course, when we get a good storm, that thing will put a column of water off of there that actually lands here. That's what carved this out. But what's significant about this plunge pool is it's where the, the ancients that were living up here in these dwellings were sourcing most of their water. If there wasn't a natural berm here, then they created it. And of course, they've been gone here for about 700 years, so Nobody here to maintain that berm, and it uh, it washed out. God knows when. Doesn't doesn't hold water anymore. But. Hmm? Uh, we need to get water. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Amazing. Okay, that's an agua pottery. Uh, the other, the other stuff are from cultures that the Sanagua traded with. Mm. They had trade relations with a lot of other cultures that were in northern Arizona. Okay, those were probably about this big, and those are obviously pre sanagua period. So these dwellings were built in 1100. 
AD. But uh, they're 900 years old. Um, these are original impact structures. They're not rebuilt. First of all, why do we call this a grotto? Because a grotto, by definition, is a cave or enclosure that has water. Now, if you look over here, you can tell this potato chip soil sort of gives it away that we do have water mm -hmm. here occasionally. Where does it come from? Only falls from the sky. There's no spring There's that spring. feeds it. It only comes when it, when it rains. Oh, and when it rains here, oh, it is really exciting. Because <laughs> everywhere you see a black mark, that's a waterfall. There's one that falls right here. And you can see where these kind of clean rocks are. That's that's where the waterfall lands, right, right here. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about images you see painted on the wall, pictographs. The first thing I'm going to point out is some of these images are thousands of years old. Uh, archaeologists tell us that red color is probably several thousand years old, even though it looks like it's painted for years. This white we see over here comes from the mineral kaolin, and the black we see here, this actually comes from either charcoal or perhaps even ground obsidian. What's important to note is that hematite, kaolin, and obsidian, so now if we start to ask what some of these mean, well, I'm, let's first start over here. I've got to give you a quick geology lesson. This hole in the wall right here actually runs to about right here. It's longer than my arm and a big long walking stick. I can't reach the end of it. The natural tapered hole in the rock. We don't know what caused it. We don't know what it was used for. There's even a, a conjecture that maybe the black you see there is from the hippies in the 60s. We really don't know what, where that came from. It's certainly not a pizza oven. Alongside of that, we can see something here that looks to us like the letter H. When we come over here, we can see something that looks like a cross. Now, we think those were put on the wall by the Sanawans, let's say about a thousand years ago. And if we ask Native Americans what those symbols mean, we get lots of different answers. So our explanation about what it means is we simply don't know. Two things we can say for sure. This is not somebody a thousand years ago anticipating Hillary running for president. Or the cross we would interpret as a Christian symbol because that's well before Christianity became the North America. As we go a little bit further around the room, we have an artifact here, as well as a bunch of artwork that runs all the way around the room and in fact around the corner. Anecdotally, people have said that it looks like the artwork here is fading. So what we, the Friends of the Forest archeological team has done, is put artwork here to ask the question, why is it fading? Could it be from the dust? Could it be from the sunlight? And this now we can take these pieces that we put up there. They're created in the same manner that we did the Native Americans did with the animal fat and the mineral pigments. Now we can take these back to the laboratory and ask much more sophisticated questions. Obviously, we can't take the artwork off the wall. Here. Well, it definitely looks like a human, doesn't it? Have you ever seen the pictures of the Hopi women that wear their here in the whirls, it looked like Princess Leia. Yeah. Actually, that's where the idea came from, uh, was, was from the Hopi woman. And when you see that, that's a Hopi woman, typically a young woman, not trying to be beautiful. She's advertising she's looking for a husband. <laughs> because in Hopi, man leaves his family, joins the wife's family, because all of the inheritance is matrilineal, down the female lineage. Yeah. Right here. Notice again, we have this classic example, the superposition. There's a white cross there with a red cross on top of it. Now that cross image is actually a pretty common image here in the Southwest. We see lots of them. No doubt they had really important meaning to the people who put it on the wall. This anthropomorph right alongside of it is a relatively rare image. There's only four of these in all of the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Three of them are pictographs, look a lot like this one. The fourth one is a petroglyph out of Wupatki. 
And if you look at it, you can pretty clearly see what that person is carrying on their head. And they're carrying a reclining flute player. Now let's ask if that's logical. Well, not if the flute player is me. I'm, I'd be a lot for somebody to carry on somebody's head. But let's think about it. These Native American people were not big people. They were smaller people to begin with, number one. Number two, might this person be a small person to begin with? Might they only weigh 50 pounds? Might their job in life to be the flute player? Mm -hmm. When that person died, might they put something on the wall like that mm -hmm. to commemorate that person's lifetime? 